Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about DOIs. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about digital object identifiers. So, when scientific journals were very first put together, everything was still done only in print. That meant that there were quite a few barriers to accessing science. You'd either have to have a subscription to a certain journal, which was really cost prohibitive and just not possible for most people, or you'd have to have access to a place where journals were stored, usually a university library or maybe a faculty member's personal collection. Researchers were limited by what access they had to information, at least until the internet. Once scientific journals started going online, the research world changed dramatically. These days, all you need is a search engine and you've got a huge amount of scientific data right at your fingertips. Instead of information being hard to find, researchers were faced with the opposite problem. So many peer-reviewed journal articles and no real way to separate them all easily. Scientists being the eminently practical bunch that they are, along came the DOI. DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier, and it's a unique series of numbers and letters that identifies one specific online item. That online item can be almost anything, but it's usually some type of data or information, like a research report, a government report, a book or a chart or an image, a conference presentation, or most importantly, a scientific journal article. These days, all scientific journal articles are assigned a DOI. In fact, you will almost always find an article's DOI included in its reference citation. References are that big long list of scientific articles you find at the end of journal articles that tell you every other article that the researchers used in order to produce the paper that you're reading. DOIs are important to scientists because they help us have a consistent way to identify which paper is where. If you've been on the internet, chances are you've clicked on a link before only to find that you get a blank screen. Maybe the link is broken, or the organization has restructured the website, or the ultimate devastation, you get rickrolled. When you're moving around in a virtual world, there's an awful lot of space for things to get misplaced or misdirected. A DOI remains the same for the lifetime of the document. So a DOI is much more stable than a URL. Now, not everything needs a DOI. Really, the best reason to get one is because you need to make your work easily citable or easy to find for other researchers. But because a DOI never changes, it has to be obtained from an international foundation called, wait for it, the International DOI Foundation. A DOI can also serve as kind of a double check for when your research was produced and that you're the one that did it. If anyone ever tried to plagiarize or steal your work, the DOI would be pretty good evidence that the work was yours first. Since not everything requires a DOI though, it must go through a process in order for a number to be created. The process is managed by the International DOI Foundation, under which certain registration agencies handle servicing people to get their digital items registered and given a DOI number. And DOIs are actually fairly easy to identify. First, they almost always start with the letters DOI. In a paper cited in APA format, it'll be right at the end of the reference. And in a paper cited in MLA format, the DOI is usually just before the access date. If you don't see the DOI anywhere, try looking for the number 10 and a dot. DOIs always start with a number 10 and then a period. So everything after that dot is formatted by the International DOI Foundation based on the way that they categorize the reference. If you find one of these numbers that starts with a 10 and a dot, you can double check that it is the DOI just by adding doi.org backslash and then copying and pasting that entire number into your search bar. If it is the DOI, that'll be enough for your search engine to take you right to the information that you need. If 
You want to know more about the different kinds of research in psychology that get assigned a DOI? Make sure you click the link to see some of our videos. Or if you want to know more about the important research projects in psychology, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can start learning all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see you all later. Bye!